It's going to be very hard to describe my feelings for the master in anything that isn't a 12 page epic, but I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. It's unlike anything that's been made in years. And if your experience is like mine, you'll feel exhausted after watching it in a good way. Not many movies can suck you in like the master can. And Paul Thomas Anderson didn't even have to do any Shyamalan twist or Crash-esque emotions toying. He just told a story about two men and it was impossible to stop watching. Joaquin Phoenix plays a drifter who has a bit of a drinking problem, to put it lightly. He stumbles across the master, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is a burgeoning thinker developing a cult following. These two men grow close and try endlessly to understand themselves by understanding each other. These two actors, whom I already thought were amazing, blew me away in this movie. Phoenix especially, just thinking about his performance gives me chills. You need to go see this if you have any love for cinema. It's worth more than a few prices of admissions, and I look forward to seeing it again. I had the extreme pleasure to screen this at 70 millimeters at the Music Box Theater in Chicago, and it made the movie that much more beautiful. You can see it when it hits a wider release on September 21st. What'd you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I, you almost have to see it multiple times, yeah. I think, because I'm only starting, you know, I saw it about a week ago, and I'm only starting to get everything. But it's one of those in. ones that you're excited to see, like, right. a bunch oh, of times. Totally. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting because you're more excited to see it, like, you are to, like, reread a great novel to study it rather than, like, well, this would be fun to see again. Yeah, it's not like, it. I'll go see Anchorman nine times right. or something. It's like, yeah, I need to understand into each what of them. Saying. Yeah. Um, especially, like, the duality between Hoffman and Phoenix, like, the man of physical and the man of spiritual and the way it played with that. Mm -hmm. And Phoenix, yeah, like you said, Phoenix's performance, I don't think enough can be said about yeah, I mean, didn't. like, I didn't really know what to expect, like, going into it, like, because the, the gist of the trailer, so I was just like, oh, this is kind of like There Will Be Blood, like Paul Thomas Anderson's last movie, where it's just like some kind of off-settling music and then just, like, people talking dramatically. But it's it's so much different from, like, all of his other stuff that yeah. he's done. Because it's not, on the surface, it's not as dark as a lot of, especially uh, There Will Be Blood, mm -hmm. but underneath, it, there's definitely that darkness, but there's like fart jokes in this. There's like it's like a pretty funny movie at part. Yeah. But the thing is, is there's these scenes where Joaquin Phoenix is being ridiculous and over the top, and you think it's really funny, and then like halfway through the scene, you realize, oh, he's just messed up, and it gets really, really. Yeah, dark. like at cert at points, I'd I'd laugh, but then later on, when he do funny things too, I'd still just be like so swept up in it. Like right. if this guy doesn't win an Oscar, I yeah. don't know what's. I'm gonna lose faith in humanity, not just movies. <laughs> just I'm just gonna just be a drifter myself and just walk the country. I agree. But enough about the master. Let's talk about us. How do you feel about us? Be sure to leave your constructive compliments in the comments section and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave us an answer to this question. What movies have you seen that changed your life and your definition of film? And we'll see you next time on The Price of Admission.